to give us the report of the uh, subcommittee. Okay. Um, we, uh, Representative Wright came yesterday with two amendments, uh, one of which um, we have eliminated the grow your own aspect of this particular bill. Uh, outlaid and outlined a very careful affirmative defense for um, anyone with a qualifying medical condition. Uh, Mr. Chairman, question. Uh, Representative, which amendment is referring to what you're talking about now? There are two, which one? Well, the one we had, oh, okay, we had to change one there. Okay, so it's 0650H. Zero six five zero. It's super. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's two one four zero six five zero eight. Okay. So you can throw out yes. zero five four nine. You can't throw it out. But what you do is say not used. But not you used. Leave it right. I leave it for this reason. So what are the two? What's the amount of the amount? Well, I have. We have several amendments. We have zero six. 50H and 0548H are the two amendments yes. that are going to be replaced with that. Too. Okay, so there was, a, there was a third one that was not going to be used. Not used. Not used. Not used. Not associated with Alzheimer's disease, um, wasting syndrome, chemotherapy-induced anorexia. Uh, let's see, what else do we put on here? We put on um, Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, and lupus have been added to the diseases that were listed before. Plus dementia associated with Alzheimer's disease. And dementia associated with Alzheimer's disease. But, but that's a real life. But the original legislation intended that those conditions right. be in there. And it, it, it's essentially a rewrite to make it very clear. Because they felt Alzheimer's was just too broad. Right? And the um, second so amendment. Deal with that one oh, first. okay. So, the, so. so you have a. You were moving off to pass. Off to pass, yes. Is please. there a second to. Second. Second. You want to say anything else about that one? No, just odd to pass as amended. 2014-0548H. What's the question? We don't get to discuss it. 
if you want to. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I just want to understand what I'd be voting on here is I, I understand this amendment completely because it it's shown its face before. Um, does it take the place of anything in the bill? In other words, is, does anything from the bill get deleted? Or is Both it just these added? two amendments together replace the bill. Oh, no. Well, we're not talking about the second amendment. I want to, I, I'm asking about 0548H, the one we're about to vote on. Does this take the place of anything in 1622? If you look at the first line, it says amend the bill by inserting after section two the following and then renumber. So it's an addition. That was my thought. I just wanted to be sure. Thank you. I, maybe I'm confused too. Is the original title going to stay on 1622? Or? I think that I think they have to. Yeah. Sometimes even if you change the entire bill, it could be about British Columbia or something, it still says New Hampshire. Yeah. Now, the only reason I raised it, Mr. Chairman, is he's, he's withdrawn that completely. No, he's not, this doesn't withdraw anything. This is just, it essentially, before there were certain symptoms that, that were listed, it was unclear as to what were, what were the actual conditions. And look, like it said, uh, seizures. Yeah, so instead of saying seizure, they say. Uh, now, the, I guess I'm just looking at the original 1622, and it's entitled "Permitting Qualified Patients and Registered Caregivers to Cultivate Cannabis for Therapeutic Use." I understand that's been totally withdrawn. So, so this title of the bill is somewhat misleading, or yeah, if it stays. It's very confusing when that happens, but that's the first time I've ever the title of it. Yeah. Sure. Well, that, that's exactly the problem we're running into with the drug-free workplace bill. Yeah. And that's still called random drug test bill. So it, the title is, has nothing to do with the final bill. Yeah. Just as to my constant state of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Totally understand that. Yeah. Totally understand that. Yeah. Any other questions? Ready to vote. I think we're ready to vote. Harding, yes. French, yes. Andrews and Hearn, yes. DiMartino, yes. Heap, yes. McKay, yes. Sherman, yes. Ticehurst, yes. McMahon, yes. Bouchard, yes. LeBron. Yes. Meany. Yes. Schmidt. Yes. And McKay. Yes. Motion passes. 14 to 0, so consent? No. no, no, no. Oh, I'm no. sorry, it's amendment. That's right. We got three yes, to amendments. So now we move to the second amendment. Right. And the second amendment. Um, I did. You did. Thank you. The Second Amendment, which is 0650H, um, relative to affirmative defenses for the use of therapeutic cannabis for a person with qualifying medical condition. And that's exactly what it does. It provides an affirmative, affirmative You're defense. You're moving on to pass. And I am moving on to pass. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to speak on the motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's, um, do I want to speak on it? it it's exactly what it says it is. It, um, it provides an affirmative defense for um, anyone who is a qualifying patient who is found with cannabis on their person. They automatically um, are protected under the law. And that's the whole goal of this mm -hmm. amendment. So is the entire bill just that one issue about the affirmative defense? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you, Chairman. Also, if you'll notice, and um, Representative Meany, <coughs> when you brought up the title, this amendment amends the title of the bill also. So it does change it to reflect 
more appropriately what it's going to do. All right, there we go. Can add. Yeah. Relative to a firm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So that I understand this, um, two parts. This um, amendment replaces the entire bill, and it does not include anything about home growing. And so if we were to pass this amendment, um, we would not have a home grow provision. And would there be any other opportunity for us to add that back in? As soon as you pass or don't pass this, it's still open to amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The um, amendment we just passed, where does that fit in with this amendment? Does it follow it? Does it, if it's replacing the whole bill, is we, it? We probably should have gone with the opposite order. Yeah. Um, this is an amendment, but it's now part of the bill. This is the bill, and this is the amendment. Okay. This amendment is now replacing by this amendment, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah. I think you have a point. We may have to go back and read whatever we do with this, and we probably have to come back. And, and I should have brought that because with this language, this, this replaces everything. Uh, so that it was everything preceding, so that we'll have to reopen that and come back. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, the, uh, the other confusing thing about this is that um, 0548H speaks to amending the original bill, amend the bill by inserting after section two the following and renumbering sections three through seven to read as four through eight, respectively. So it's speaking to the original bill. Well, it's still Bill, it just says House Bill 1623. It doesn't list the titles. Um, well, even though this becomes the bill. I thought of the list of the second one, may knock that right out. The drafter used the original bill. And amended the original bill with the language that includes the addition of epilepsy and lupus and Parkinson's and as opposed to assuming that this would become the original bill. Yeah. 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 Pass this or not pass this, and then go back and put that in. Again. Well, are we allowed to amend the amendment here, or would it have to be a floor? Um, I think we can use that amendment. Um, it's just that the, I think we took it in the morning. Um, it wasn't nice, so I think we could. We, we can check with the clerk's office for that right now. It's too early in the morning to get down the time. So this is the more important uh, issue that uh, I think we can put in. It would be confusing because I was going by the dates. And, and the earliest date was seemed to make me do that first and then the later date would be second. But it's logical that the second one replaces everything that's in the bill. So that if we put that in first, then we can pass this, then we just knock out the whole thing. So I think we can simply put them back in. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I understand part of this, but if we go back and revisit the amendment we just passed, it refers to sections and numbering that no no longer exist. So is that going to be a problem? the signs and symptoms onto the amendment which is passed through the whole bill. Yeah, we could probably do that very quickly. Uh, and <coughs> like that. Jim, can we temporarily re re redraw that? Should we approve and then 
then act on this and then act on the other. That's an act we, we, we did. Uh, but what we need to do is to get another amendment that <coughs> changes that amendment. Okay, so that, that, that amendment marks out the first one and is replaced by a second one. Um, I, th I think we should finish this part of it and then put it down. Because uh, we're right in the middle of this. Okay. So what, what we're going to do is, is finish this amendment. Okay. Whichever, whatever way this goes, then we'll go back and rework that first amendment so that it, it fits in with the right number and lines and so on. So where are we on this one? Um, did, did this amendment ought to pass? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what discussion? Yeah, Just for clarification, we're talking 0650, right? Yes, yeah, correct. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion? Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I plan on voting against this amendment. I think this amendment is a cop-out, and it does not serve the patients that uh, our therapeutic cannabis law in is intended to benefit. Um, I, I appreciate the, the letter written by, of, of all people, uh, Assistant Commissioner Sweeney, when he provided a summary of House Bill 1622 uh, as it was written. And since I have the floor until you tell me otherwise, I'm going to read the first two paragraphs of that. Of what? Uh, the, the letter that uh, Assistant Commissioner Sweeney provided to us, I think they're pertinent here. The pertinent to this amendment? Yes, sir. The, um, this amendment is proposed to replace a bill that permits patients and caregivers to cultivate cannabis for therapeutic use in a lock site under control of patient or caregiver after reporting the location to the Department of Health and Human Services or under the control of a licensed alternative treatment center where you're secured with a locked device. Uh, the rest of the first paragraph of his letter tells us there are significant controls in the, the law on the books plus House Bill 1622. Also, in, uh, in his letter, he tells us that already in this bill, it would be an affirmative defense to a drug charge if the defendant has a qualifying medical condition, does not possess a medical card, but had submitted a completed application to the Department of Health and Human Services. Essentially, what, what this summary tells me and what House Bill 1622 already has in it is that all this, all this amendment does is it strips out what patients need the most. And that's the ability to cultivate marijuana for their personal use in their homes. And it, it, it just doesn't seem that coming from a House of Representatives and a committee that has supported this multiple times in the past, that for some unknown and unstated reason, right now we're stripping out cultivation in the home, it doesn't serve patients. All it does is serves, it serves somebody's political agenda. This this committee is this committee is here to serve the patients under our current law and allowing controlled home cultivation is the way to best serve that. Uh, and further, Mr. Chairman, uh, some of the some of the comments from Representative Wright is that he says right now patients have nothing and it can expect nothing in the form of, re of relief for some time to come. If we pass this amendment, we can make, we'll be sure that patients will continue to have nothing and that they can continue to expect nothing in the form of relief. Um, so I, I, I ask that we reject this amendment so that we can pursue as a committee and then as a house the home cultivation option so that we can protect the interests of the patients who need it the most. 
Would you say that the legislature has passed home cultivation over many times? I don't think we ever passed that. I've only been here for a year. I'm a rookie. It seems like that's not an accurate statement. I guess I would say that uh, the legislator has shown its support. And I know it has in this committee. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm, I'm talking about final legislation. <coughs> representative. Uh, and and, and I, I think, Mr. Chairman, along the same lines, I believe that uh, last year this legislature, and I know someone else here could answer the question better, but I believe last year that this legislature put forth House Bill 73 to the Senate with the home cultivation option and then only via a uh, whatever that committee is that makes good bills worse. Yes, uh, the committee, only via a committee of conference did the House give up its position. So yeah, I guess I, I guess it was an accurate statement that this, this legislature has supported home cultivation in the past overwhelmingly. The legislature is the House and Senate. This, the good part of the legislature. <laughs> but anyway, we shouldn't be debating, or I shouldn't get into that. Representative Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and you're right, the bill we sent over to the Senate uh, did include home cultivation. Uh, and it was pulled out under, frankly, because of the threat of the governor uh, that we took seriously that she would veto that bill. Uh, in the case of this amendment, uh, I personally would still support home cultivation. I, I think it's a good thing. Well, what we're looking at here, I believe, is sometimes half a loaf is better than no loaf. So we have a chance here to, uh, by definition, increase the number of people with various diseases that could be impacted by this, and we get into an affirmative defense. The reality of it is, is the governor has said she will not entertain any bill with home cultivation. So I think at this point I, I will support it. Uh, and I'm just being pragmatic. I, uh, I just don't see any sense in voting this down uh, and denying some folks with conditions the ability to get this, hopefully within a year. So it's just the reality of the situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I just need a little help with the process again. So it, we have passed an amendment. Um, um, Right. We passed one that added some um, diseases, qualifying conditions. And if the current amendment that we're considering were to fail, we would still be doing some good if we went on to pass um, the bill, original bill, with just the first amendment. We would still be correcting a situation. Um, and if there were no further amendments after that, then we would be improving the situation, maintaining the home growth. If, if I were to go to the walk through the traffic jam, one pathway would be that we approve this amendment. And then the amended bill without home growth goes to full house, presumably passes, goes to the Senate, presumably passes, goes to government, gets signed. The alternative would be to say, no, we want to keep home grow available for the reasons outlined by Representative Meany. It goes to the full house, presumably passes as we have in the past, it goes to the Senate, and it may get stripped out, it may not. Uh, may go to the conference and we may have a repeat of last year, but at least it's still alive out of the house. Um, and so I'm wondering what would be, if, if the feeling of this committee in the past has been that we would like to provide that ability for relief now, then we're anticipating processes that may never occur and the only chance for home grow would be for us to say let's move home grow out of the committee with the defense understanding that with the what is that called? affirmative defense understanding that it may eventually get pulled out of the bill 
either by the Senate or in the Committee of Conference. But if we kill it here, it's gone for good. If we move it out of here, if we, if we, IT, if we ITL this amendment, go and vote, ought to pass on the original bill with this amendment. The other benefit of that, of course, is that we don't have to amend the First Amendment. But the, um, but at least Home Grow has a life still coming out of this committee. So I would, I would lean towards get, keeping it alive. And that's, I think, the way I'm going to vote. Mr. Chairman, can we vote on the original bill the way it was, now that it's been amended? I, I just here. Can we vote on the original bill? Can we, can, we can. The original bill, 1622, as, and add um, the way it was written that includes on the ground, and it's only as an amendment that adds more to the Actually, there was one in the original. Where we are right now is we are working on the subcommittee report to us. The subcommittee report to us was two amendments. And then we kind of screwed up on the first one, so now we're on the second one. We have to reverse that. So that, that, that's um, the structure that we're working with. The, the bill can be amended again. challenge of the governor. Uh, if the governor wants to challenge something like this and she wants to veto it against the will of 63% of the residents of the state, then my feeling is let her go ahead and do it. Challenge her. Call her bluff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I know no better way to phrase this than probably the kind of polymetry increase that we do over uh, over across the street, but if I know that we've already passed an amendment to this bill that allows and protects patients with lupus and dementia associated with Alzheimer's and a couple other important diseases, and if I know that this, this committee and this house in the past has already stated 
that it supports the option for patients to cultivate their own cannabis uh, could somebody realizing this to move or second that amendment withdraw their motion? You lost me at the end. Could, could the person who, after hearing this, after hearing this discussion, the person who moved the amendment or seconded the motion withdraw that second or that motion and therefore wouldn't wouldn't even have to vote this down? That's a subcommittee report. So that's the report of the subcommittee. Uh, I don't see how that will change. But a, a person cannot withdraw their motion or second? No, the subcommittee voted that that's an act. It's like saying can you now go back and change something that just voted two hours ago or something. So that's we have a process, the subcommittee is a process, and they vote. Well, that comes to us, we need to go along with that vote. There's a totally different way of getting it if you want to allow us to. I wouldn't attach that to that First Amendment, because if it goes down, then you lose everything that's in the First Amendment. So what, what you do, what, what is made, and I don't support this, but I would go for a further one that adds in what I'm voting. I'm, I'm just, I have a process question. Is this amendment 0549H in front of us with a motion to be accepted? 650H. Well, whatever. Is it in front of us to be accepted? Yes. Okay. So then whoever made the motion and if they withdraw, if they if they so chose to accept it, have it one way or the other. We are in the process of accepting. And that's what's getting lost here, I think, at this point. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the other option for the committee is that we have to vote on 650. And if the committee doesn't like that amendment, we can just see the bill. The committee needs to vote down that amendment. We've already passed. 528 with the diseases and the symptoms, that amends the original bill, 652. Six, uh, so if we vote down 650, then we would be left with having passed the symptoms and the diseases in the form of 548 and the original bill. Is that, do you understand that? So the original bill has to and the original bill is strips on the and then on and then on home grown, right? And six conversations going on. Let's just steal with one. Is that right? This is the one that's in front of us. <coughs> it's been recommended by the subcommittee. Uh, and my feeling is go ahead and deal with this one or the others. Uh, this does one positive thing, uh, and that's all it does. But then we go back and straighten out the, uh, line, the lines and things like that to make it conform with this. Then you still have an opportunity for somebody to bring in a bill uh, that adds on the run. Uh, yeah, as a member of the subcommittee, at best, it was a compromise to get something passed. And if we shut down an amendment, I fear it won't get passed. And we did all the work for not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm now good and confused. There are three components that we're looking at, and this is germane to the amendment. One we just passed, which is expanding the eligible uh, diagnosis. Second one is home grow, which goes away if we pass this amendment. Which, so, in the original bill, it was. If if this amendment passes, 
then the original bill is replaced and we've lost home growth. And home growth was never in the original bill. Home growth was in the bill of the year ago. I thought 1622 had home grow in it. It does on line 17. Right. Right. Yeah. So does the first paragraph. Yeah, the first paragraph. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it does. It does. This bill has right here. So when this I understand that. I'm talking about the, so the amendment. Let's get this straight. So when this went to the subcommittee, the prime sponsor took that part out of the bill. Is that right? Is that right? Although, if I can finish my question. Sure, the prime sponsor then sends us a bill dated letter dated today asking us to overturn the subcommittee vote and allow this to move forward in its original whole form. So my question is, and back to my three components, that I've already dealt with one. So the second one is home cultivation is in the original 1622. Is affirmative? I thought affirmative defense was also in the original 1622. Mm -hmm. It is. So the final issue here with this amendment is we are getting rid of home cultivation. Mm -hmm. So we have a choice of voting for this, which keeps uh, affirmative defense, but dismisses home cultivation or dismissing this, going back to the original bill, which would allow both, and which could be further amended either on the floor of the House, in the Senate, or in a conference committee. Is that correct? Is that like correct? Thank you. <coughs> um, well, Chairman, um, this letter does this was dated today, and Ted must have changed his line from when he signed his I don't think it's a revelation. He had a communication that we also got. Well, the one that I got was the two of them together. Um, he, I've, I've talked many times to the president. There's no question he wants home growth. There was also no question that the government vetoed that. I have confirmed that again. And, and whether we like it or not, that, that's what she's going to do. So that's the problem. We can pass it. Then <coughs> everything that's in here is done. Yeah. Yeah. Just to show we told the task. Yeah. If, if that's in there. So the pragmatic approach has nothing to do with the new. It's just that we can get the most possible um, for the people who need this. We also have a commission that's working on this for us and David Chair. We're trying to move that as fast as we can. Yeah. The, the major problem is the time between the moment when certificates are issued by the commission and the time that the, the treatment facilities are open. It's that time between when there's no marijuana available. The homegrown or legalization, and that's not about business in this community, would take care of that problem. And, and allow it to happen. Uh, the, the police are strongly against that. The chiefs of police, the, the state police, all of that. Um, they, 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 so my feeling is, as much as possible, that we can get the department to move quickly to open up the uh, treatment centers is the best way. There's probably going to be a decision uh, recommended by the Attorney General that the commissioner do not authorize those certificates until the treatment centers are available. And that could be quite a lot. That, that's, to me, that's the major issue. Thank you, Chairman McCain. There was one other thing that this amendment corrected 
on page two of the amendment, which goes to page four of the original bill. On page four of the original bill is line six. On page two of the amendment, it is line two. And the wording in the original bill said, written certification certifies that the onset of the person, person's qualifying medical condition, et cetera. In line two of the amendment, it says written statement. And the reason that needed to be changed was because the department informed us that there is much different rules and qualifying items that need to happen around a certification as opposed to a statement. And it made it easier for the provider, the department, and the individual. And so without that, you're, you're wreaking havoc on all three. We needed that change, and that's in this amendment. In the amendment that replaces the In the amendment the bill. that replaces the bill, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm concerned about um, us getting into a legislative quagmire here with there possible, there, with there being a chance that the amendment to replace the bill might get voted down, with there being content in that amendment that is still needed in the original bill. I'm just wondering if we have any flexibility in possibly um, recessing this conversation until March 4th and asking the subcommittee to meet again to try and iron this out so we really know what we're doing and we don't have a fragmented piece of legislation in front of us. Is, that, is there an option? It's an option, but I'd like to get this done. You know, we're up against a very serious time frame which is called March 6th. And otherwise, we would have to put this into study or something like that, but we're not talking about it. So that would be a worse position. That As one of the subcommittee, it's my suggestion that we approve the amendment as is and put homegrown in next year. Thank you. I, Mr. Chairman, I would feel much more comfortable if we could be presented with separate amendments for separate purposes so that we didn't have to throw out something we believed in in order to protect something. Um, I have that mixed up, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I would really like to deal with this amendment. It's an important amendment. It, it doesn't stop anything different from happening. You know, that we can do something after it. But if we pass this and then go back and straighten out the first one, we've done something. Uh, and, Sir, uh, is there, and there's nothing stopping anyone from, if we pass both of these amendments today, bringing in an additional amendment that would add home. Yeah, it's a four amendment. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we could do this. Are we, anyone in this committee? Yeah, or anybody in the world. Who's in the legislature? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And likewise, a person like myself could vote my conscience, and my conscience tells me that we need to have home grow in New Hampshire, and then someone could, on the floor of the House, make an amendment to take that out. Um, so you, I want to put it in the end of the other I want to So may I ask, may I ask, um, Representative Tice first, is, are you, are you asking us to put in the amendment for homegrown now with the idea that somebody would take it out later? My recommendation would be to um, um, vote down the amendment and, and to adopt the original bill as it was amended this morning and then um, ask for either, ask for, assume that it's open for a floor amendment to, um, to address the, the, the issue of the statement and also assume that someone whose conscience was different from mine could <coughs> offer a floor amendment on the House that took out the 
home grow pr provision. And I'm going to quickly just add to this too that um, I'm not particularly savvy about poli the politics that happens around here. And that might be a good thing. And uh, so I can't base my decisions on what somebody else might do in their strategy to gain their goals. And I don't even know what Governor Hassan would do with the, um, the bill without the home grow. I don't know if she would support it, the affirmative defense or not. So again, I just have to make my decisions based on what I know and what my conscience says. I have many constituents who want the home grown, and I've been struggling with this because I understand the law enforcement position and the governor's position, but I also have constituents who have reached out to me who want this home grown. So it's, it's um, I'm probably going to uh, vote down on this amendment. I'm going to vote for and thank, you, thank you for your guidance and your experience on this. I'd like to offer to the committee uh, the following. Um, I don't, and I think as representative of the meeting and others have maybe alluded to, I'd rather show leadership than followership on this issue. Uh, and I am one that does not uh, ultimately believe in uh, marijuana use, uh, but, when it, but I have couched my terms on that issue when it comes to medical use. <laughs> Uh, the, the access point here has been it'd be okay if there are these centers that will provide it. This is the same argument took, that took place on other issues before this committee that's uh, that dealing with disability issues and mental health that resulted in a lawsuit that, that obviously was just settled. Uh, doing the right thing should not be a debating point. And we've had this issue of bringing efficacious medication to those who have nothing else. So we've addressed that. Um, I don't look, uh, and again, I'm, I won't count it, I'll say, I'm not looking to the governor for leadership. I'm looking to this committee and the subcommittee that did the work on this. I would offer that we do as already recommended. And what I'd like to see happen is the original bill as amended with the, with the um, additional conditions and to offer that to the tender mercies of the Senate and do our advocacy for those who take the time to show up at that in that crucible and this, and to advance it and this and then to do that that advocacy there to not bring it to the table is like going to a street fight with one hand i mean it is, this is a street fight i mean it is it's, it's a change of culture however as stated earlier so much discussion has taken place that it has become more tolerable that if it's medical application and to help people in pain that it makes some sense. And one thing I've used in, in this community before, I call, I, I call it living the life. Unless you live the life, people don't feel that pain or suffering that folks experience without having a solution before them. I'm not one who wants to uh, aid and abet a law breaking. Uh, I believe these folks will and need and do need what uh, they require in terms of with marijuana. Marinol is a, an abysmal failure. You know that's a synthetic THC. Uh, when I first came into the house uh, 12 years ago, that was on, on the table. Uh, it doesn't do, it's not, the efficacy isn't there. So in, in this case here, in respecting the great work, uh, and I do say that with a capital G of the subcommittee, um, is that, that we set aside that amendment that takes away the main issue for these folks, which by the way is the most cost effective. Uh, you want to see things now that are jumping in Colorado is it's a high cost for the so-called good stuff versus the not good stuff. Uh, these are so many of these folks have already a financial struggle that they maintain this for themselves within the controls already detailed in here and the affirmative defense which is already in here that we can move forward and help these very very difficult cases in our state. Therefore, Mr. Chairman, I believe we can show leadership here as we have in the past and hopefully continue on this subject matter. It's 1622 with the amendment we've already voted and we can, because it's with respect to my chairman, we have had subcommittees retract their motions in their seconds when it's found it's not, it doesn't make sense after this type of discussion, which I think is great going back and forth. And then what we have is a bill to, to move forward to the House and then allow, ask them with the same argument 
And we would need some of us to stand up on the floor of the house to say the same thing, is to ask for that to move forward to the Senate for that review. And that's why I'd be not voting for this amendment. This amendment should be withdrawn. I mean the, uh, the larger of the two um, amendments here, which is uh, 650. That, that, that's, I, I don't want to be intellectually insulted on 650. We're, we're here to make sure we take care of our New Hampshire citizens. That does it. And, and then to move forward with the, the bill as amended, 1622 uh, amended with 548, and let us boldly move forward by showing leadership and the commitment that we all said we believed in when this bill first came to our committee. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with all due respect to my fellow representatives, I think there's a lot of praying going on to the patron saint of lost causes. Uh, if we go forward with this, and I for one will take the governor at her word, she will veto this. She doesn't have an option to accept a partial bill. She has the option to accept or veto a bill. All right, now, you can say I'm going to stand on my principles and going to do the right thing. I'm going to get back to my half a loaf again. If you do this, nothing will happen this year. Nothing. If that's what you want, then veto this, vote it down, pass the original bill, and we're going to be back here next year without any changes to the conditions that are affected by these folks, nor the affirmative defense. I understand the need sometimes to play bluff with the governor. Trust me, I chaired the subcommittee last year on this. I was fully aware of the governor's wishes. I was on the committee of conference. Uh, I really doubt that the chairman over there is going to accept this. She's going to strip it out. And the governor has a guaranteed veto. If you feel you want to stand on principle, I, I, that, that's your wish, but I'm, I think you're cutting your noses off to spite your face. Sometimes you got to take what you can get and move on. So I would urge you to take this amendment, pass it, and at least do something this year. Because in the absence of that, nothing is going to get done. I'm done. As the chairman of the subcommittee, I have to respectfully disagree with you, Steve. Well, we just said but respectfully. <laughs> I, 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 I think that Charlie's speech was impassioned, and um, my instincts tell me that we should take the Second Amendment and ITL it and go with the original. Your position, of course, the subcommittee is gone. So Sounds good. We're not right. stuck with that anymore. But as the chairman of the subcommittee, you have to report what your subcommittee voted. It's the same thing as if this goes down, I, I have to support this, whether I like it or not. That's my job. <coughs> so you, you can't so I can't vote against this? You can do anything you want. Okay. That's what I'm saying okay. is that don't speak for the subcommittee, because that's confusing, because it adds uh, something exactly like this. Okay, so I, I would be happy. Thank you for answering my question, but I do believe Representative French was trying to get your attention first. Is it okay to let her go first? <laughs> okay, I will. Um, again, I feel that um, probably this home grow will be taken out. It can be taken out at a later stage. I don't want to be responsible for that. But I also want to point out that the governor isn't the last word on this also, because governor vetoes can be overridden. And I know that there are snowballs involved in this. But point. There's also something called the Senate. Yeah. Exactly. Was, took this up the last time. It, what, what this does is this tries to add in small increments to make it a, a slightly better bill than it was before. I know what the governor's going to do. It's good luck in this office. I want to make this the best I can. 
There's a bunch of people working to do the best they can on this. The administrative rules, which we've been waiting for, I now have a copy of the first set of those. So the committee is moving, uh, and, and that's where the responsibility lies. But I'm talking as, not as that chairman, but this chairman, and I have to abide by whatever the committee does. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I've been sitting here listening. We are a health committee. We are a policy committee. And I guess I'm tired of the bit of go along to get along. We have an obligation to some constituents who have waited a long time to receive cannabis and be able to grow it at home. We all recognize the pitfalls. We know what might happen and might not happen. But there is a process to go through, and, her, and Chairman McCain just pointed it out. We have it, it goes to the floor, and then it goes to the Senate. Who knows what the Senate is going to do, and I guess we're not supposed to talk about the Senate. But in any event, I guess I really feel we're a health po policy committee, and we need to make a health policy. So I'm going to vote against this. Thank you, Chairman. I have a question because one of the biggest pieces for me in this, aside from the change of language between certification and statement, is the affirmative defense. And if we go with voting down this amendment and going with the original bill and that bill gets vetoed, then so do the people's right to an affirmative defense. And they can be charged and arrested. Um, so in other words, what we have here is people who want to do the right thing, which I completely understand and concur with, but while we're doing the right thing, we're going to make every one of these people liable under the law. And so for principle, in homegrown, we're going to have them get arrested. I just can't. I can't go along with that. I agree with this amendment. It was I'm with all due respect, I don't Agree that we are making people liable under the law. Then they are already liable under the law. Okay. Uh, we're not. We're not making it a crime. It's already a crime. But aren't we helping it with the affirmative defense? It's in 1622. Yeah. So what what this amendment is doing is pulling out the home cultivation. That's all it's doing, and and fixing that last phrase so which still probably needs to be so anyway I I just wanted to clarify that that I don't think we are doing an act of making people liable of anything. I think everybody is spent going around right. two or three times about where they stand. I, I don't know if we're gonna change anybody's mind at this point. Thank you Mr Chairman. And if you want to call the last speaker, that would be fine since it's uh, trying to see a latent to you. I could say that, but somebody puts their hand up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I'm going to vote against the amendment uh, so that we have the original bill, House Bill 1622, with the home cultivation option that does include patients with lupus, Parkinson's, epilepsy, and dementia associated with Alzheimer's, and it includes an affirmative defense. Now, if that affirmative defense statement needs some technical changes, uh, I would suggest a, a floor amendment if we get to that point. Uh, but I, I do feel, and thank you, Representative French, that yeah, we're, we're a health committee, we're a policy, uh, and I like to go in a gunfight with a gun, so if the, if the committee of conference, if it were to go to that, uh, comes down to we need to strip something out, you don't show up with the weapons that you need, you can't get rid of something. So let's let's have everything possible for our health policy as we go to the committee of conference so that if something needs to change, we have something to negotiate with. Let's go with more rather than less. <coughs> 
I'm sorry, I don't want to prolong the thing. But there was something very specific that Representative McKay pointed out that we should do, and I don't want to forget that. That's, 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 that's going to be gone. We vote against this amendment. That's gone. But that would be another thing. Another thing. Let's, let's try to focus because we're just talking specifically about this amendment and not about what the government's going to do, the Senate's going to do, the other what we're going to do right now. And I think I know what that is. So, so let, let's go ahead and vote. Okay. The, the motion is not to pass. Just to be sure that people know what the vote is. The motion that's in front of us is off the pass on amendment, whatever it is. It's the number of amendments. Six by zero. Party? I regret to cast in my vote. It's no. Thank you. French? No. Andrew Zahern? No. DiMartino is no. Heath? No. McKay? Yes. Sherman? No. Tysers? No. McMahon? No. Bouchard? No. Lebrun? No. Colbert? Regretting no. No. Nini? No. Nelson? Since I came in came late, can I avoid the vote? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the rule is if you're here when the question was put, you have not. to vote. And well, you're you here when, I, when we called the vote. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, you were here, or yes, you were voting? Yes, my, my yes. vote. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. You. Schmidt? Yes. And McKay? Yes. yes. Motion fails. What is the motion for? What was the count? Four to twelve. Four yeses. Is that a V? In that, that amendment just failed, is it possible to make a recommendation to go back to the subcommittee to come up with, to come forward with another amendment that includes the necessary elements that were in the amendment that we just voted down so that we don't lose those things? The, the way we are right now is we're back to the original bill. Yes. With the, the amendment we passed before this one. Right? Yes. So that much of what's uh, discussed is in that bill already. Uh, so that we may not have to do anything else. I mean, we, we took that out. Uh, as far as I know, affirmative defense is in the original bill. Yes, it is. Uh, and uh, so is um, on the wrong. Uh, so the, the actual situation, I think, for those that want to head in that direction, is uh, uh, essentially what we've got is the original bill as amended in front of us now. Yeah. And so if somebody wants to make a motion of ought to pass on the original bill as amended, am I right, John? So we're back to the original Yes, we are. Bill, yep. With that one amendment. That, yes, sir, that's correct. That, if I may offer one idea, it's similar to what we did on 1615 a moment ago. Yeah. Uh, and in the context of having a completed work effort here, could we have this recessed until an hour later and have the uh, that word, the uh, change in that document, made as part of the uh, this work, this amendment, and then voting on that completed document, as opposed to doing it on the floor. You try to wait, try to explain it on the, on the floor, it's, it's I, 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 I don't believe that's really what we ought to be doing. I think the committee is saying that they're in favor of that, and, and we can do that right now. Then, then yeah, then we can make the vote stick with the stipulation, you're going to make that adjustment. Yes, sir. And you've done that before. <laughs> so, so what's in front of us at this point is ought to pass as amended by the First Amendment. The Second Amendment is gone. And, uh, the, and, and there's a technical correction uh, that the subcommittee has uh, given an amendment to, uh, but we're agreeing at this point that it's so simple 
that we all can understand it. But um, sometime today, we need to see that amendment just to be absolutely sure. So that the amendment representative. I just have one more question. In terms of the piece of uh, the bill that we're going to vote on now, does the ability to grow cannabis is that in perpetuity or is that only until the point at which the centers are up and running? I think it's in perpetuity. Like an offer one thing in the bill it states you can only it's perpetuity only if you're outside 30 miles from a um, center that we alluded to earlier for a, a store for lack of a better word. Which is a little weird because they don't exist at this point. They don't and, and who knows when. But that's it. And uh, I can tell you that the current sponsor of this bill said that he wanted, he intends to bring another bill forward later on because being able to grow on your own is so much less expensive. And he wants to see those um, <coughs> those kind of financial considerations put in place for the patients who really need this. They have no to pass the original bill as amended by the first amendment. There will be a technical correction that we've approved. We need to see that. We need to see that today. No, we're saying right now this is it. This is it. Okay. Court, please call the roll. Do you need a motion? Yeah, we do. We need uh, Representative Andrews of Hearn moves ought to pass as amended with an amendment, whatever it is. Ought to pass as yes, amended? Yeah, and there's no sign on the amendment. Pat, second. Six. No, 60538. Yes. We can sneak in the wrong number. No, we don't want to do that. No, it's, it's amendment 60548. Oh, 0548. Oh, it's amendment 60548. Oh, 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 we can always use the other number. <laughs> 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 okay, everybody understands where we're at. Yes, second the motion.